Uh, thank you, Sally. Any discussion? Thank you so much. All in favor, raise your right hand. Debbie, can you hear me now? I can hear you really well. Okay, good. I moved my microphone closer. <clears throat> okay, so first up tonight, we have reports from Highland Community College Technical Center, Lucas Huntsinger. Welcome, Lucas. <laughs> I feel like I'm yelling now. <laughs> Let me put that back because I want Sally to hear me. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me here again so I can share some information about things that are happening at the Technical Center right now. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the high school and to the school district on the 2nd. Last week, we hosted a job and career fair. Um, we had 28 employers there, and we had a ton of people come through, um, students from the high school, students from the Technical Center, and then uh, people from the community as well. Uh, the employers that were at the job fair uh, said they were very happy, um, thanked us for the opportunity to be able to come out and, and try to recruit because as we all know, there's a huge labor shortage. Um, everybody's looking for more help. So we we're glad to be able to offer that in combination with the high school, with our adult ed program as well as Kansas Works as well. So that was very good. Um, We've had 50 Atchison High School students, roughly, come over and tour this spring already. We look forward to some more potentially coming over as well. Touring, looking at the different programs and offerings that we have, um, and then looking at potentially enrolling for the fall. That does not include the, number, the, the students that are currently attending that will return again next year as well. So looking forward to a good enrollment, um, duly enrolled students, both at Atchison High School and the Technical Center. February, um, we celebrate tech CTE, Career and Technical Education, in the month of February. Um, during this month, we've had a number of activities for students. We also had our Scholarship and Outstanding Student Awards Assembly at the high school also. Um, that was, was a, awesome. It was, it was a very yeah. good program. I always enjoy it. It's a, it's a chance to celebrate um, career and tech ed and the <coughs> students that are working towards their goals and their lives and bettering our community. Um, it's a great time to celebrate those students that are going above and beyond and really to um, hand out some scholarships too, which is always fun. Um, so during Tech Ed Week, um, we also we did biscuits and gravy one morning for all our students. And then for all our afternoon students, we did uh, nachos um, just to celebrate and do something. Uh, it's, it's somewhat moving back towards normalcy. Um, we did break our groups up a little bit, so not everybody was there all at once, but um, it's been fun, and we've been having fun this month and, and celebrating. Also like to recognize our uh, Business Professionals of America student organization. They went to the state competition um, last week, or two weeks ago maybe now. Um, two Atchison High School students, Aubrey Griffin and Sierra Bass, uh, we'll be moving on and competing at the national competition in Dallas. Yes. Um, they were a part of the administrative support team uh, that won the state competition, so they'll, they'll be moving on. Uh, awesome. So I'm very happy to celebrate that as well. Skills USA competition will be coming up in Hutchison uh, next month, so we look forward to students that will be competing in that. Um, we'll have electrical technology, auto technology, auto collision, welding, um, I'm trying to think, I know I'm missing someone, uh, but we'll have students from a number of programs that will compete at the Skills USA competition in Hutchinson. So looking forward to that. Um, also, if you've been out on Green Street or if you're on your way to Walmart, you'll see the new credit union that's being built, but just behind that you'll see the house that the Technical College has been building. It is nearly completed. We will be um, accepting sealed bids on that. You'll see notifications go out in the public. So if you, if you know of anybody that's looking for a nice home, uh, it is very nice. It's a three bedroom, uh, two bath house. Uh, so really looking forward to that uh, being completed. And we'll be moving on. Uh, our hopeful next building site, which we have acquired now and started some cleanup, is the old tennis courts at 5th and R Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're working with the city right now to get that all lined up uh, with city inspector and, and the county so we can start building there hopefully later this spring or, or in the fall. Um, we had our diesel students attended the Western Farm Show in Kansas City last week. And then next week, even though it's spring break at the Technical College, um, we will have auto collision and auto technology students attending the World of Wheels uh, 
show in Kansas City as well, are uh, auto collision. Students will also be submitting a an entry into the. Uh, it's a little mini car that they build and customize and paint and, and mm. display. So mm -hmm. we'll have a we'll have an entry in that Great. competition as well. Mm -hmm. So. That's just some of the things that have been going on over over the last month or so. Uh, I would stand for any questions about anything we have going. How's that new building? The new building is awesome. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it has been so nice. We've had uh, so much more space. Uh, it's it's a safer working environment. We've been able to bring in more projects than we have ever been able to bring in in the past, uh, which allows students to have more. Um, access to different types of projects as well as not being uh, quite as big of groups. Oftentimes they're singled up on projects or, or only doubled up where in the past we may have had, had to have three or four students right. working right. on any one project. So, uh, it's, it's been awesome. It's, it's impressive. Been, I mean every time I go was, out there I'm just like wow. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been really great. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about it. We're looking actually, so we've been doing a, a little bit of marketing research on how we may expand um, our advertisement for that diesel program. Now that we have the larger facility, uh, we have the capacity to increase our enrollment. Um, we're looking at reaching into the North Kansas City area and a little bit farther over along the I-35 and I-29 corridors. Um, onto the Missouri side and seeing if we can't pull. We feel like we, we do a pretty good job about pulling our high school, the eight uh, high schools that feed into the technical center here on the Kansas side. So really looking at opening up that marketing uh, to, to really reach out to some of our post-secondary students yeah. that we're not getting right now. Okay. Keep it growing. We'll, we'll keep trying. I would say um, we are, our current enrollment um, this spring, uh, we are over 360 students at the Technical Center, uh, and that does not count our, that is technical enrollments, that does not include our adult education program, um, and it does not include our uh, gen ed enrollment. Nice. Uh, so we're, we're not as big as we've ever been, but we're as big as we've been for a number of years. Good. Nice. Looking good. forward to continuing to grow that as well. Awesome. Okay, keep up the good work. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Next, we have our data analysis overview from Amanda Drury, and we are really excited to hear from Amanda. So welcome. Welcome home. Wow. I think the last time I was in a room was big, like with this many people, they were all five years old. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a copy too, Amanda, in front of us. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good to you all. Well, good evening. Thank you. Do we for have a copy of this evening? Yeah. Good to see you. Oh, I thought you were Yes, it is. Um, as you know, this position was created to address the need for um, an active and targeted data collection system for the district. It's a two year ESSER funded position. And the goal of the data system I'm working on is to give us a clear, concise picture. Um, of each student in order to address their needs the best way that we possibly can. Um, so thank you, Dr. Nugent and board for entrusting me with this new <laughs> adventure. Um, working remotely has been wonderful so far and haven't encountered many technical glitches or anything. It's been pretty seamless. Thank you, Donna. And so <laughs> it's, it's been really great. So um, I'm just going to kind of do an overview of some of the focus things I've worked on so far this year and then where I'm hoping to go. Um, as we go forward. So my main focus has been learning Edge Climber, which is our data warehousing platform. Um, my goodness, the capabilities of this platform. Um, I've been working on getting everything into Edge Climber so that we can really visualize all of that data and have it all in one place. I got to go to the virtual conference hosted by the company Illuminate last week and I my mind is just so full of possibilities and so many ideas. I'm so glad I got to do that training last week. Um, really excited. It kind of altered the direction I wanted to go with this presentation, but 
we're just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Um, prior to last week, I had pretty much just had one hour-long training that I did with Misty Wilson, an interventionist at AES, um, and a lot of help desks, and a lot of phone calls, and a lot of chats, and a lot of emails, a lot of hitting walls, and persevering, um, lots of help documents. So I did that conference last week, and um, the training with Misty, like I said, and, and all, of the, all of the help desks, that's where I'm at at this point. Um, my next focus has been just accessing all the data that we have as a district. Um, as a kindergarten teacher, I was not real familiar with all of the places that our data is and what all of that entails. So um, I've been really doing a lot of crash courses in how to access the data on a broader scale, looking at state assessment scores and HCT scores and um, all of the progress monitoring tools that we use, especially at the elementary level. I already power school all of those things, mm -hmm. um, and figuring all of that out, and how to upload it into Edge of Climber. Um, so far, I felt more like a data gatherer than an analyst, but I think that's just the way the process, that, right. the progress mm -hmm. that, that's going to be made. Um, I've gotten to build some custom importers, just really um, brushed up my Excel skills I hadn't used in a few years, and that's been really interesting, and also working really closely with the data team at Edge of Climber. They've been really wonderful. Um, they've had a lot of turnover in helpers as well and people learning their system there as well. So it's been sort of a challenge for all of us, but I feel like we're kind of all in it together. So um, last week with the training, I confirmed in a lot of ways that I'm on the right track. So that felt really positive and really, really good. Um, one of my bigger focuses has been working on student interventions. And I've worked at AES with the intervention team um, in, in a lot of depth. They work so hard. <laughs> they work so hard, and they've been so gracious with their time and their input and their grace as I'm figuring things out um, and getting all their data in. But I do feel pretty confident now that we are we have a good system in place for getting those academic interventions into Edge of Climber, and we're seeing their progress monitoring data, and that's becoming more seamless. I found out last week about how to pull some more reports, some effectiveness reports, which is going to be really fun to see in long term help us figure out if those interventions are really doing what we want them to be doing. So um, I've been attending SIT meetings for the primary and the intermediate students all year long. Um, I was supposed to start at the middle school today, <laughs> but of course without school, that didn't happen. So <laughs> we'll get into the middle school and the high school here in the coming weeks as well, so I can start working on those things with them too. Um, one of the things that I'm working on is an achievement dashboard for the district, which is a pretty cool feature of Edge of Climber because it will allow us to show you the information and with other st stakeholders in a really concise way. Um, and hopefully it didn't log me out because sometimes it does that. This is the district dashboard as it stands right now, and this is still a work in progress. Um, but I did figure out how to get some things in there that we weren't pulling over from PowerSchool um, last week during training, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, and all of the tables in the dashboard with Edge of Climber are are interactive, which is kind of fun. So if I only want to look at this year, I can take the other year out. And we can look at things like ethnicity and meal status and our attendance data. We can look at our test scores. So we've got just an overview here of what our district-wide iReady reading um, is from the winter last year to the winter of this year. Um, and then we can look at our state assessments from two years ago to last year. Um, just kind of an overall picture. And then the really cool feature with Edge of Climber is that we can then take these visualizations and we can make public links for them. Now, when the public looks at them, like say on our district website, they won't be interactive, but we can give them the data and we can update that as often as we want. <coughs> so for example, if I click on this picture, yes, it worked. This is um, a visualization from, obviously I did this a couple weeks ago because it doesn't have March in here, but when you click on a link in our website, it will go to whatever visualization we want the public to see. So if we want to share those test percentages or whatever, we can share those types of things, um, as well as any of our demographic information. So that's pretty fun, um, just figuring all these new little things out. Um, and another thing I've been working on, excuse me, is the collections feature, and I've just started at the elementary school, and I'm building a collection for each grade level. Um, now, this is supposed to be in top secret mode, so 
Yes. <laughs> um, and nothing's showing up. What in the world just happened? There we go. Um, this is one of those cool features, um, this data wall. So for example, if kindergarten has to sit down and look at their students as a whole, looking at this data wall, they can sort these columns so we can look at the major behaviors and the number of major behaviors. And then we can also look at that side by side with academic information to see if there's a correlation. And maybe there is, maybe there's not. But if you scroll on down and look at kids who are super proficient on these on these um, these assessments, are I ready reading and math, and then looking at things like um, have they been in a, in a tier group? Are they getting interventions? Are they receiving special education services? Have they gone to our after school program? Are they going to our summer opportunity academy? We can look at all of those things and really drill into that data to find the correlations between what we're doing and their performance. So wow. I'm excited about that. This is something that could be a really great tool, I think, to use during PLCs and uh, meeting us that teams. Wow. And I'm excited about that. Um, another thing I'm really working on is streamlining processes. Um, we had a lot of things that we started with Edge Climber um, that we need to kind of streamline and get uniform across the board and all of the all of the buildings um, so that we can just kind of have a seamless process. And that was there's a lot of things that are not outdated necessarily, but not named correctly. Like we were looking for some behavior information for a state report and. We found out that some of our descriptions don't really match what the state descriptions are. So mm -hmm. we're going to streamline that. So next year when we need that report, boom, it's right there and all of that makes sense. So we're looking on those kinds of things. Um, also, now that we have the academic interventions in place, now we can start working on what behavior interventions are going to look like in Edge of Climber. And I'm really excited about that because I want to see how our social emotional learning is correlated to behaviors and what we need to do better to help support those kiddos and then get their academic um, information, their academic scores higher as well. Um, this is something I got to work on. You've probably seen this little mm -hmm. visualization that it. Dr. Nugent wanted. That was great. <laughs> yeah. And it was really fun. It was kind of a break from looking at spreadsheets, which was kind of nice. Um, plus, I got to do some of the graphic stuff that I kind of just, I love doing that. That's one of the things that I've always loved doing. So um, we created this infographic for stakeholders. We had just basic information about the district on the front of it, which was fun to find all of those facts and all of those things. Um, and then on the back, we talked about where our ESSER funding had gone and then kind of did some brainstorming about ways we might want to spend future funding. And then we also took that and um, changed the back side of it and put some information in for teacher recruitment tool. So I dug into things about our community and about our proximity to shopping and restaurants and airports and grad schools and some of the benefits of teaching at 409 so that we can get some new top quality teachers in there too. So that was pretty fun to do. And then as I mentioned before, I've been working with the Edge of Climber data team to create those uploads that we don't have and get all that stuff in there so it can upload seamlessly, hopefully, in the future. So <coughs> moving forward, uh, my priority is to just really refine and simplify our processes um, so that makes it really, really accessible and really, really easy. Our teachers have way more on their plates than they need to have anyway. <laughs> I know from experience and I really want to make this really accessible and I really want to make it easy for them um, so that they can see the value in it and it doesn't add one more thing. It helps take some things off of their plate. And working with the interventionists, the AES, so far this year, I'm hearing a lot of really positive feedback about how it's helped simplify some things for them. So I'm really hopeful we can continue to integrate that for all of our teachers and for our administrators as well. Um, I'm hoping to be conducting some trainings for our staff um, going on, I guess, the end of the year, maybe this summer, um, talking about our data use and how to reflect on those things and how to collaborate so that we can really differentiate for the students. And um, also documenting all of this. Right now I have a handy dandy notebook <laughs> with all of my notes and my scratches and I'm going to get all of that into a manual type format. So we've got some videos, we have some pictures, we have some step-by-step -step how to's so that eventually anybody can look up what I've done and know how to do it themselves. So um, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. You have used this your time valuable. well. <laughs> yes. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a challenge for sure, but you know, 
you're not learning, you're not growing, right? So that's been, yeah, it's been great. It, well, just a comment. That it's, it's easy to say that we're going to use data to improve teaching and learning, but unless it's organized efficiently, mm -hmm. uh, you can't use it. Uh, it's there, and you can maybe pull some few observations from it, but what you're doing is really going to help us utilize it to improve right. teaching and learning. So, obviously, you've used your time well and your creativity. Thank you. Yes. So yes. I'm just going to add a comment that Jackie and Amanda meet regularly. We do. We meet every week, every Monday. And so um, she, she's a true gem that you never see. I mean, this is our my first time to see her in person all year is this board meeting. Yeah. And so distance learning and teaching can work, and it can work very effectively because she truly gets to focus she doesn't get interrupted she doesn't you know mm -hmm. they set a plan for the week she holds herself accountable sometimes more than i would ever think like she mm -hmm. sent us a list of all the things she was going to attend at the workshop the, the virtual workshop and i'm like you go girl i trust you <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, i think it has been money very well spent out of esser funds and um, I, we appreciate you amanda yes more than thanks you for getting us rolling Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Amanda. Great report. And keep up the good work. Awesome. Do we have any public comments, Jenna? Oh, yeah. oh it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's so wow. exciting. Just so we can carry yeah. it on and we don't yes. have Maybe we'll decide that positions needed. It might be. No. Since there are no public comments, we'll move on to the approval of tonight's consent agenda. May I have a motion for that, please, as presented? <clears throat> I, go ahead. I move to um, to accept the consent agenda as presented. May I have a second, please? Second. second. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand, please. Passes unanimously. Next, we're going on to action items, and it is to revise and reaffirm the board policies BCBH through CEA, and Ms. Honeywell will give us a... Talk. So we had the first read on these policies last month, and mm -hmm. we made no changes. Mm -hmm. Just policies for reaffirm. Okay. With that, I would entertain a motion for the the uh, acceptance of the revised reaffirm board policies. I'll make the motion to reaffirm Board of Education policies as presented, policies BCBH through policy CEA. Thank you, Stephanie. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Sally. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand, please. Thank you so much. Next is to approve the 23-24 school calendar. And Dr. Nugent, do you have anything to say about it? Or, no, I mean, it looked, I, that's I got, what they wanted, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. I got zero feedback after the okay. last board meeting. It was. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so may I have a motion, please, to accept that calendar 23-24? I move that we accept the calendar for the school year of 23-24. Thank you. May I have a second? A second. Thank you, Brandy. Any discussion on any of that? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Next, some items for discussion and consideration. And it is uh, the first reading of policy CEB through CM. And again, Nicole Honeywell will visit with us. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> so that first round of policies, again, these are just for reaffirm. It's our normal cycle of looking back at all of our policies and making sure we don't need any changes there. Mm -hmm. And then while you're up there, let's just go on to the next one. Um, it's a proposed policy addition. Um, these four policies were the only ones not recommended to reaffirm. So as we reviewed the non-discrimination policies and then looked at some sample policies, the policy committee found that there was a need to protect all students. So when the committee met, that included Sally, Stephanie, and Sean to discuss the need. As a result of the discussion, they recommended changing the language essentially to the definition of protective class to add sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. And that would be for four policies, GAAA, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Non-Discrimination Policy, mm -hmm. GAAB, Complaints of Discrimination, KN Complaints, and JCE Complaints Related to Students. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we'll take a good look at those, everyone, and uh, bring those back next month. Thank you. <clears throat> next is our summer maintenance, capital outlay, technology plan. All that is the first read. Did they, did you want to have... Uh, Lori, Lori and Jay, Jay, Donna, they'll probably all yeah, hop in. Yeah, just hop in whenever you're ready. <laughs> I think I'm the only one coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless needed. <laughs> we can ask questions. Thank you. <laughs> does Debbie have a copy of this? Yes, yes she does. Yes, however it's changed, and it's changed again since then. Okay. 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 That's the reason it's a first read. <laughs> yes, that's Constantly right. changing. So the first two years on there that you see in your board packet is correct. That was just a history. I kind of wanted to show you where we've been, what the cash balance is doing, what we spent our money on in this fund. This is the capital outlay fund. We currently levy five mills in this fund. Mm -hmm. You can go up to eight. We are currently only able to levy five. So in order to do eight, you have to do a separate resolution. It's subject to protest. We have not taken on that step yeah. yet. Yeah. So we are levying our current max. And that revenue comes in in five mills, right underneath the revenue, the first item, that's about how much we get in each year. Also included in this fund is if we get a reimbursement, let's say somebody overpaid, or we get some money in that was from a prior year, we have to put it into this fund by law. <clears throat> the next thing down is interest, anything we earned on our bank account funds in the form of interest payments, we go into this fund except for the amount that Patty earns in food service. Then we have state aid. We finally got state aid back a couple of years ago. We're very happy to have it back. It's about a quarter of a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so those were for the last two years. We're focusing right now, the 2021-2022 is the current school year. We're about halfway through, a little more. So some of the revenue on there is received other is not. So we haven't received our state aid yet. We haven't received our March or June payments from the county. Those will also go in here. So I estimated that on here, which in yours, I did not. Okay. okay. That's why there's a big difference. Okay. Okay. I wanted to go ahead and put it in there because we will receive close to that amount. And that, at the end of the day, affects our cash balance report or our cash balance, mm -hmm. which I think is a decision factor on what projects we do. All right, going in, any questions about revenue, where it comes from? Okay. Going into proposed projects. For this year, we have building needs. Each year, we, each fiscal year, we give $10,000 to each building. They spend it, so far, they've spent about $34,000 of that amount. By the end of the year, they usually spend the total amount, and sometimes it crosses fiscal years. So if you see that number higher in one year and lower in another, that's what that's happened. Because we can only spend until June, and anything after that, sometimes it doesn't come in on time, and we don't want to pay it if we haven't received it. Mm -hmm. We all know how shipping delays are right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so going on to our leases, we have two of them currently. We have an ICAB lease for grades 6 through 12. That's the $96,000. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've made our final payment on that this year. Next year, we don't have any payments scheduled for that ICAB lease. The second, I, the second lease on there is for laptops for the teachers. It's about $50,000, $51,000. We have one more payment after this year. When we started the iPad several years ago, we paid a year in advance. So we'd have a year of planning, or we could pay, kind of prepay, to get us through. Mm -hmm. It was a financial idea that we came up with. It's worked so far. Mm -hmm. So we have a year to prep, essentially, before we make our next decision. So, you won't see on there the iPads for K through 5, because we bought those outright with County Spark money. Right, right. right. That will turn into a lease at some point, more than likely. You'll see that here in a few minutes of what our idea is to combine all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. The next expenses, building and ground, summer maintenance. Um, I think you have a list in your packet. Yes. It's usually mm -hmm. around $88,000 that we do painting, regular maintenance work. We try to take that out of the general fund, but as our general fund has been decreasing lately, we're moving more of it to capital. 
Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's just a way for us to internally move some money around to free up some money in our general fund. More um, concrete, carpet, that kind of repairs is also on there. Emergency repairs, as our buildings are getting older, we seem to spend more money in this. Mm -hmm. It's coded as an emergency repair on here, but after I complete the repair, then I put it as an expense as to what it was. Was it an air conditioner? Was it a vehicle? That kind of a thing. Parking lots, those are very costly, as you can imagine. For this year, we've spent 130000 That was in June and July. Uh, the roofs, we will have to address it at some point. It's in our long-term plan. We need about $4 million for roofs. Right now, we're just doing a maintenance thing. Mm -hmm. Trying to put Band-Aids where we can. <laughs> trying to prevent leaks and making anything worse. Technology, you'll see our plan coming up here in a few minutes, but some of those main things we've been spending technology funds on for capital expenses is security cameras and a software called TransFinder that we use for Apple Bus. It makes doing routes much easier. Okay, um, other, that could be anything that comes in the line that we just determine as a building need, and instead of waiting a year to put it on the plan, we go ahead and put it in there. Any questions for the current year? This was already approved from last year, except for emergencies or anything that came up unexpectedly. <coughs> the plan that we're proposing that you approve is the 22-23 plan. Revenue estimates still about the same. The iPad lease, I put lease amounts in there to reserve a space for them, because mm -hmm. we will have a lease. I don't think we want to pay for it outright, especially since we get 0% interest. It's kind of something I save our money and earn the interest on it. Right. Uh, buildings or grounds, again, placeholders for what we determine to do next year around this time. <coughs> emergency, re emergency repairs, I upped that a little bit. Buildings are getting older. We seem to have more and more phone calls from Jay. we got to do this and this and this. <laughs> Um, what else? The parking lot. We put on it for $200,000. I was just talking with Jay. We're going to postpone that. We're not ready to do it. There were some things that didn't get done last year because of COVID that we would like to do this year instead. And we don't think we're going to have time to do both because of the parking lot that we would need to, that we were going to address is going to take a lot of prep work. And I just don't think we have time to get it done. So instead, we're going to do 180000 We're going to up it to 200000 before the next read and do um, the tuck point at the Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And I believe at the elementary school, Jay? The EFAS repair and power wash it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Power wash it. Fix it up. The elementary school. So we're doing elementary and middle school. Mm -hmm. The cost on here right now is $180,000 per other. I'm going to up that for 200000 and take out the parking lot until the next year. Okay. That makes sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of talking. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Will you get us the updated proposal so yeah. I can get it out to them? Correct. Perfect. Yes. The main thing we're doing is taking off two hundred thousand dollars, adding twenty thousand. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's the cost difference. So, what you sh one thing you might want to look at on here is what I would look at if I was in your position is cash balance. Several years ago, we did not want to drop below two million in cash balance. And that was when our buildings were not as old as what they are now. Mm -hmm. Now we're at about four million, give or take, depending on the year. That's going to go down probably in the next year or two because, again, we have older buildings. Emergency repairs are going to come up. Roofs are going to start biting us soon. I have a feeling. I think at some point we're going to start needing to look at a bond issue, primarily to address yeah. roofs. Yeah. They take it's up a lot of our capital. Yeah. I and just wrote that. I smell a bond issue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Questions? All right. That's the big one. These are just what we put on here for a placeholder so we don't forget. That parking lot is still on this list because we're not going to do it right now. Right. Anything? Questions on the back burner list? No. Okay. This is Donna's technology budget. We give her about $196,000 out of our supplemental general fund. This is where she puts it. <clears throat> Again, each year it changes. It could change in the middle of the year, determining if that with iPads or laptops. This isn't needed. We want to do this kind of a project instead. 
This is ever evolving. Currently we have on here, this is the current year, so she spent about 70,000 out of her supplies, software, that kind of thing, out of 113,000. Then she breaks it down into equipment and what parts we need to do. You'll see on here, projectors, Apple TV, switches, upgrades. Any questions on Donna's proposal? Again, this is based on what we're hoping to do next year. This is what you're approving. Projectors are going to be a big cost and switch upgrades. iPad cases and power supplies, those seem to go quicker than the iPads, so we put in a cost for that. I didn't do a three year plan, usually I do for technology, but it's too changing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw a number out there, it could change five times by the time we get there. But I still reserve that amount for Donna each year. Okay, the technology capital outlay money. So again, the 341,000 is what we spent on the K through five iPads. We were reimbursed by the Spark money for COVID from the county. So we didn't have to pay for that out of pocket after all. However, don't foresee that happening again. We will have to come up with a lease for this. Our plan is to do a K through 12 iPad lease. When all this expires, get everybody on the same generation of iPad so we don't have yeah. any of that confusion. We can switch out cases more effectively, right. that kind of a thing. That's okay. The MacBooks, we have one more year on those and they're doing okay, so we're gonna wait another year to replace them while we work on the iPad lease. Our plan now is to replace them in 2024. Again, this is just a estimate. I think at the end of the day, we're gonna be spending about $234,000 a year on iPads and laptops for a lease payment. So for four years, for the amount of staff that we have and students we have, I think that's pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't, I don't see that being a problem at all. Okay. <coughs> Additional capital outlay needs for technology is cameras. We've been updating those a lot lately, especially with security being an issue anymore. We wanna update our cameras. And then we have a required phone upgrade. Your phone itself will not change, but the back end of it we have to upgrade. $61,000, so she needs an additional $66,000 for this year. Questions? You know, technology really happens fast because I was thinking about those K5 iPads and it would have been two years ago next week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we ordered yeah. those and yeah. it seems like yesterday yeah. that we were delivering those but it's already been two years yeah. Yeah. Time flies. any questions concerns anything you want to see next month as a second read no i think just the upgrade the yeah that's yeah anybody else Any? Well, if you change your mind, look at it when you're bored one night, go and give me an email. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you have we'll any questions that. about the lease or anything like that, okay. email me is the best way to get a hold of me. Okay. 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 Thank you, time. Lori. Thank, Thank you. you. A good report, Thank you. Lori. Thank you so much. Uh, next is executive session. And may I have someone make that motion, please, for executive session? And Larry is going to come in with yeah. us. So the add first him. ones for negotiation. Uh, Madam President, I move that the board recess into an executive session to discuss the following subjects. Negotiations. The justification for this executive session is to discuss employer-employee negotiations, whether or not in consultation with the representative or representatives of the body or agency pursuant to the exception for employer-employee negotiations under KOMA. The open meeting will resume in the BOE community room at. I only need about 15 minutes here. 655. Uh, 6:55. Mm -hmm. a second. Thank you, Sean. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Let's. You can tell Debbie. To